UFC 111, St. Pierre, Hardy. Check your local listings. Previously on UFC Prime Time. I'm the most confident guy I've ever been in my life. I'm a martial artist. He's not. He probably doesn't understand the meaning of this. But after the fight, I guarantee he will. The key to defeat in GSP is to not be afraid of GSP. My only focus is just to put fist to face as often as possible. GSP is uh, an awesome fighter, but when hit cleanly, he will fall over. And that's what we plan on doing. We plan on hitting him cleanly and making him fall over. I'm in the same situation that I was when I lost to Matt Serrot, and uh, this thing is still in my mind. I learned my mistake in the past. No matter how people tell me how great I am, I'm always at one mistake to lose everything. I've been fortunate enough to find a place that's going to give me an advantage in this fight. A bit of inf inside information that's really going to help my game. We're about 10 minutes away. Uh, are you going to meet the gym when we get there? Wednesday night in Long Island, and Dan Hardy is already acquainting himself with the locals. Can I tell you between me and you? Can't stand GSP. Is that you? Yeah. That is yeah. you. Yeah. It, do we look alike? Yeah. It's actually my twin brother. Yeah, it is, yeah. The same situation that I was when I lost to Matt Serra, and uh, this thing is still in my mind. He's in his pants right now. I can almost smell the fear. So hard to take what George has now. I've never seen anything as impossible, but it would be something that would be so difficult that it would probably almost kill him in the process. I almost want to hit that guy more than George Sapir. <laughs> so he came to New York City and he didn't have any money when he was younger. So what? I've been there and I've done that as well, you know? I'm still doing it. How, ca how can he be as hungry as me? How can he be? With less than two weeks until the fight, a night on the town provides a welcome respite. But for Dan Hardy, this trip is strictly business. The MMA world is abuzz with news of Hardy's newly forged alliance with the last man to beat George St. Pierre, fellow welterweight Matt Serra. I see a guy that, you know, is in shoes that I was in, you know, and He's a cool guy, he needs some help, and you know, I'm here, man. You know, you know I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm doing the right thing, and uh, it's good karma, it comes back to you. They're on the hook, heavy on the underhook. Boom, you start the pummel, he doesn't want you to get the double underhook. He starts pummeling, and we're out. You know, and it's, yeah, smack him, smack him. Let's make it realistic. Matt's a veteran, you know, he's been there. He knows how to prepare for these fights, and you know, to get that kind of input is invaluable. Um, it's, it's gonna go a long way, it really is. Nice. Something will open up. The sport needs more guys like Matt Serra. I've always liked his style. I've always enjoyed watching his fights. But to you know, to get to meet him and to train with him as well, he's so generous with it, with his knowledge. It's uh, it's it's refreshing. You know, there's a lot of guys in the sport that won't be like this. Let's work. Nice, nice. Keep working from close guard if you get it. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Good. You know, I'm working with him and his guys to see what I can do on the ground and. You know, he can add to that, which is, you know, which is a huge advantage. Nice! Nice! GSP knows in this fight, he has to go for the takedown. If he stands and trades with Hardy, he's going to get knocked the f*** out. Hardy's stand-up is way superior. GSP's got to get the fight to the floor and look to submit him, and that's exactly what we're going over here at my academy. These are the positions he's going to be doing, so it's not like, oh, f what do I do here again? It's going to be muscle memory. Let's, uh, go right into the half-guard position we're working on, okay? You can always switch more there towards the second. Nice! Up, 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 up. Run, run, knees to the floor, head out, go to his back. Nice, my man. GSP is going to feel light compared to this guy. <sighs> nice, brother. Good, good. Not a lot of guys are giving Dan a chance, man, you know? And I know what that feels like, and, I, and, uh, good. and more importantly, I know what it's like to prove, prove people wrong. There's a lot of people that you're going to give a big F you to, 
when you when you win the fight. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, everybody out there, oh yeah, I'm gonna get destroyed. All right, I'm gonna get killed. I'm gonna get. <laughs> Guess what? What happened? <laughs> After the Sarah session, Hardy heads to New Jersey for powerlifting with renowned strength coach Joe DeFranco. I think he's going to be underestimating my strength. You know, I'm, I'm a big welterweight and I'm a strong welterweight, and he's going to find that out on the 27th. Right up, nice. Perfect job. Down. Drive up, chest up, chest up, chest up. GSP is very athletic, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a weak guy. You know, I, c I can move weight when I need to, and I can move people when I need to. Drive, drive, drive. Get your chest up, get your chest up. Nice. <laughs> strong. Good rep. I think everybody knows about his knockout power and his striking ability. The things he's doing is only going to make his punches come harder and faster. Get up there. There you go. Good. A little higher. Oh. Nice. The things he's doing are comparable to what my 250 and 260 pound NFL players are doing. He's the strongest 170, 180 pounder we've ever had in here. And we got some of the world's strongest athletes in here. Oh. There you go. Nice. Good. That was your best one right there. The scary thing is, he has the technical skill to know what to do with that power. Jab cross, one, two, jab cross, that's it, don't let me walk you down. Two, don't let, here we go. One, the Dan Hardy that's coming into this fight is a lot quicker and a lot more powerful than, than the Dan Hardy that people have already seen. Chop, chop, relax. What I know is that my workout is the winning formula, you know? You, you can't put muscles here. And that's all I'm aiming for. So it doesn't matter what he's doing. He can jump over bars higher than me. He can lift trucks. It makes no difference to me. When I connect on his chin, it, he can lift all he wants, but he'll still go down. Stop, stop. Here we go. Here we go. Morning in Montreal. And the man who has guided George St. Pierre to six straight wins is already hard at work. I look at Dan Hardy's footage, I really take it serious. It's very important to be specific in how you prepare. Winning is about going the extra mile, it's about doing more. It's always about doing more. Doing higher quality and doing more. I've never seen anyone so much into something. He gets up in the morning, he watches his fights, he studies, he, get, he goes to work all day. He comes back and he's still thinking about it. And of course he takes really good care of us <laughs> while doing all that. Me and George, we're the same age, so we've watched each other grow up. And that's something very special. He, to me, he's a family member. You know, I'll do anything to make him successful. Because I don't want to see George St. Pierre the fighter when I want to see George St. Pierre, my, my brother, win. Since I'm, with, I'm I'm working with Ferraz, I'm undefeated. I had a talk with him after after I lost to Sarah. Uh, I, I was not really trusting nobody. I needed a guy that that has more knowledge than, than I have, and a guy that that could bring me to the to the next level. Ready, go. A guy who's really really smart, and that's why I turned I turned to Ferraz. It's not enough to be at the level that George is. There's a lot of motivation that goes on, that goes to fuel all these hours and hours of training. And how are you going to motivate your fighter if you don't know him well? How are you going to motivate him if you're not under his skin? How are you going to get there if you don't even know each other? Just get your heart rate up, and bring it back down, and explode again. A good cadence. Ready? Yeah. Time. I'm not scared of Dan Hardy, no matter what. <laughs> In the far of him training with Matt Serra, I don't care. It's good, better than New York. I don't have any control of what Dan Hardy is doing and I don't try to stress myself with it. <laughs> For me, I see a fight, it's like a mathematic problem. I wanna put all the chance on my side and that's how I'm gonna beat him. The TriStar Gym is readily equipped with a well-stocked arsenal of fighters. This week, St. Pierre welcomes two of the UFC's finest. Yes, sir. George is smart. He trains with all the guys who are going to be able to push him in the right ways. Nathan Marquardt, one of the best middleweights in the world. 
super fast, super strong, can push George in all areas. So once you get control here, you should go here. If you get inside here, I can't get that control, now go under. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just missing that last. Yeah. Myself, I just try to use my speed, groundwork, and movement to really try to push in the best that I can. It's such a great asset to have these guys come up because when you train with the best of the best, you know, chances are you'll be the best. I have a good score, guys. Just letting you know, right now I have 130 points. Uh, Nate has 40. You have 10. He has 5. You still win. That's the unofficial score. Really, there's going to be a point in this fight where Hardy realizes that he's he shouldn't be in there with George, that he's way over his head. That's where the fight's going to turn, and it's going to be all George. I train myself to fight an army of guys. By training myself fighting an army of guys, one man will not break me. This is what I'm going to do. March 27, I will beat Dan Hardy and stay world champion. The war is on now. The war is already started. Yeah. You know what this is. NYC. The triumphant return. This is a life-changing fight. Yeah. This could define me as a person for the rest of my life. You know, and it, it does nothing more than excite me and motivate me. I'm here for a challenge, you know, I don't want to be walking through people. And I don't think anybody's going to walk through GSP. I'm, I'm a little cocky, I'm, I'm aware of that. I don't mind upsetting people because most of the time it entertains me. <laughs> a lot of people look at me as just the joker who's, uh, you know, who's enjoying winding people up. But now I'm getting some recognition and I'm doing well I think I think people's opinions are starting to change Sirius XM Fight Club here are your hosts Randy Gordon Ariel Helwani UFC 111 is sold out officially we're being told this is the highest gate ever at the Prudential Center all for you this kid from Nottingham who no one expected to be here have you sat back and pinched yourself yet uh, yeah, a few times. It's quite surreal. Um, I mean, I still see myself as, you know, the, the, the kid from Nottingham that started with Taekwondo. You mentioned that you had trained with the monks. Yeah. Now, what was that like? What did you do? What was your days like? That's amazing. Flew into Beijing and first time I'd traveled anywhere on my own. Um, traveled up to northern China and I spent two months in a, in a, in a, a monastery up there working with the monks and it was just a crazy experience. At the age of 18, Hardy had been studying Taekwondo and Muay Thai for 12 years. But a thirst for discipline led him on a 6,000-mile journey to the North China Shaolin Martial Arts Academy. I just needed to stand on my own two feet. and I needed to go somewhere and take myself out of my comfort zone. And I thought the best way of doing that was to fly thousands of miles around the world and, you know, put somebody else in charge that had been doing martial arts since they were born. Uh, I was sleeping on wooden slats, no glass in the windows, um, no heating, no, no nothing like that. It was character building. It was the mental endurance that, that was the difficult thing for me. We were training in like a clearing in the forest. In my head, I felt like I'd really achieved something because the boundary that I'd set for myself, the, the, the limitation that I thought I had, I realized didn't exist. And ever since then, I've, I've just been able to push myself. At the point in a fight where somebody thinks, I can't take this anymore, I'm done, that just doesn't occur to me anymore. As far as saying I'm not a martial artist, he, he don't know anything about me. B because he walks out to the octagon in his pyjamas, he, he's a martial artist and I'm not. It makes no difference. He, he knows nothing about me or what I've been doing since I've been six years old. You know, I'm, I've, I've been doing martial arts my whole life. I'll brawl, but I'm thinking about what I'm doing. I'm, I'm a cerebral fighter and I deconstruct my opponents. I know what I'm doing in there. Just because I enjoy putting a beating on someone, it doesn't make me any less of a martial artist. 
you stand there in front of somebody and you trade punches till someone falls over. And I always like my odds in that equation. <laughs> Martial arts is about going to war. It's about, it's about messing people up is what it's about and that's what I do. I want to use every second of my life, every time that I have in my life to make me a better fighter. That's why I'm a martial artist. For me, it's more than a job, it's a way of living. Here we go! We like to watch the tapes to make sure that, uh, you know, the game plan is on par. Check, negative angle. Have you? Yeah. He's looking down, right? Exactly. You want George as tuned as possible to fight Hardy. See the elbow, he always goes to the elbow. How do you stop that? Ear to ear. My mentality is like a samurai. They used to every day work on their technique to make themselves almost perfect. Because perfection, it's, it's impossible, but every day you get closer to the perfection. And that's what I want to do. I want to I every day get better than what I was the day before. The following afternoon marks the biggest challenge of St. Pierre's 10-week camp. Five rounds of full contact with a hand-picked crew of elite sparring partners. You nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. nervous. <laughs> Today's judgment day for George. We're going to be pushing him as much as we can, and we're going to get a good look at what he's going to look like on March 27. Basically, it's going to show if he's been training the right way. If he hasn't, if he's been doing the wrong things, if his mind's not right where it's supposed to be, it's going to be a rough day for him. Right now, we're going to throw George into the fire. See if he burns. It's going to be a hell of a day. I hope, I hope, I hope you had a good breakfast, George. <laughs> I can't have a training partner like already he's unique in himself, you know, in, in his style. But I have guys here who are better than already at different things. My single weapon today is Pat Cote. He's bringing a very good counter punching style, a very good slugger style. He's one of the best stand up fighters in the UFC, so preparing with him is going to be a great help. George has to be very, very prepared for this fight to, to win. Uh, Dan Hardy has a lot of confidence in himself, good striker. Uh, but, you know, I can't see uh, Dan Hardy win the fight anywhere. First world title fight, George. You're ninth. This is number nine for you. It's number one for him. You have everything. Well, maybe GSP needs to speak for himself, not get his f striking coach calling me out. You know, if I was GSP, I'd be telling my coach to shut his mouth. I've trained hard, I'm prepared well, I know I can win the fight. Pass me at your peril. This is the age of Dan Hardy. This is the time that the outlaw takes the belt. It's the future.
UFC 111, St. Pierre, Hardy. Check your local listings.